In this video, we're going to talk about sales tax in QuickBooks Online. So I have a brand new QuickBooks Online file. I'm going to go to new invoice just to show you that there's no sales tax being calculated here. As a matter of fact, there's a button here that says setup. That's one way to get started. You can click on setup and go through the setup process via this screen. Or if you don't have an invoice open, you could also click on where it says taxes on the left navigation bar. Click on taxes and then go to where it says um, sales tax. So taxes, sales tax, you open that up. And the very first screen should say something like use automatic sales tax. Some people are still in the old sales tax system, which is going to look different than in this page. I'm going to be showing you only the sort of this new automated sales tax system. Then we're going to put the address. You want to put the address of your, of your business, the address of um, where your headquarters is per se. And you're going to hit next. Then it's going to ask you, what states do you have um, tax agency with? Right now, I'm only going to put Florida for now because I'm not going to use multiple. But we can do examples of multiple in a little bit. Then I'm going to click on the drop down menu and I'm going to select, let's say, monthly. Now, depending on how much sales tax you collect, depending on your state as well, and sometimes depending even on the counties, you might have different uh, frequencies. This is something you need to ask either your CPA or you might need to contact your local sales tax agency to figure out based on your business and how much sales tax you're collecting, what you're supposed to be doing. I'm going to hit next. And then it says, do you need to collect sales tax anywhere? For now, I'm going to hit no. And then hit next. So then it tells me, okay, we're good to go. We're going to set up Florida Department of Revenue for monthly sales tax. We click on finish. Then we click on take a look. And now it shows that I have zero sales tax liability for January of 2024. I can click on the drop down menu and choose the multiple jurisdictions or agencies that I have. I can click on X here and then I'm going to scroll down so you can see all the accumulated for the multiple months and you can even see what the sales tax return will look like. Now you also have a button here that says sales tax settings. If you click on that, you get to see uh, all the different uh, tax agencies you have and then you can edit. So if you made a mistake, and, um, and you want to set up a different frequency starting a different date, you can do that. You can also select whether or not that state or that agency requires you to file sales tax in accrual or cash basis. That's going to be different by state. It's going to vary, vary by state. Florida happens to be accrual, so that's why we have that in there. So this, is, this has nothing to do with how you file income taxes. This is the treatment of sales for sales tax purposes. Okay? Now we also have custom rates, things that are not part of the automated system. So for example, if there's some very specific rate that you get on your county or some special tax that gets paid to the same agency, um, however, it's um, hospitality tax or something like that, that, something different than sales tax, you can create your own single or combined rates in here under custom. And you might need to go back and do that depending on the type of sales tax requirement that your business has and your uh, state and or even the agencies that you have Nexus with. Okay, so now that's set up. There's really nothing else we need to do there. Now we're going to start creating invoices. So I'm going to go to new. I'm going to go to invoice. I'm going to just backtrack this to um, December of last year. That way it starts accumulating for uh, future years. I'm going to pick a customer here. I'm going to go down and pick, uh, choose an item or add some billable items. It really doesn't matter which, uh, which route we go to. I'm just going to add an item here. And let's say this is uh, $500 or $5,000. Now, if I don't check uh, taxable, it won't calculate tax. I actually have to click on the little checkbox and, and make it taxable for it to become uh, something that's taxable. Now, generally, services generally services are not taxable, but products are. So this is why QuickBooks doesn't default that as taxable. But I'm going to click on the drop-down menu, click on Add New, and then I'll create like some products. Okay, so let me do non-inventory and let's put here wires or something like that. And then I'm going to go down here and says where it says, hey, is this taxable? What kind of sales taxes would this product have? And you have to make sure you configure your individual products to be tied to a particular sales tax rate. So I'm going to click on edit sales tax right there, edit sales tax, mm -hmm. click on that. And then I'm going to tell it what type of product it is. So I'm going to type wires, see if, if there's anything like this. No, let me type cables. Okay, nothing like that. Let's put electronics okay nothing like that it becomes kind of kind of hard to find specific things let's scroll down and see what we got here 
Retail maybe. Let's do that. Taxable retail items. I will pick that. Okay, and then we make this taxable and then click on done. Okay, that should just work. And then I'll just do my regular uh, configuration for my items. Okay, perfect. Okay, so there's my item wires. It's set up for the standard taxable rate. Let me click on save and close. And then we'll, let's say we sold 17 of these for $10 each. So essentially on these right here, we should have sales tax calculated. Now the problem is my customer doesn't have an address yet. And then QuickBooks is very address centric. So if, until I have an address, this is just not going to calculate any sales tax. When I click on edit tax, it says right here that um, that we don't have the location and address. That's kind of the problem. Okay, so um, do we uh, collect sales tax for this agency? Yes, we do. So hit save and close, and just make sure that works. And I'm gonna uh, close that, and then now it's set up for 11.90, which is gonna calculate only on the 170 dollars that's taxable. If I click on the uh, the checkbox for taxable for services, it just won't work. It won't let me do that because that item. It's not set up to be to be taxable. Only wires is set up to be taxable. And if I click on this little checkbox to turn it off, it won't calculate any sales tax. So I'll check on that one more time. And then I'll click on the drop down menu and do a save and close. There we go. Invoice has been saved. Okay, so that's it. You just have one invoice and one sales tax liability. If I scroll down and go, go tax period and click on last month, we're gonna see here that we have $11.90 all the way in the bottom which is our tax liability. It says it's overdue, okay, so because that was due um, around the 20th and I'm recording this on the 29th. And that's accurate, that's supposed, to, that's supposed to be what it's doing. I'm gonna click on view tax return so we can see what that would look like. We click on that and then it's gonna basically show me what the tax return should look like. Now, this is not a tax return. You still have to fill out the tax return on your state website. There's a very specific sales tax return you will fill out, specifically like the 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 one in the florida is called dr15 that's what it's called in florida every state's going to have its own thing this is actually what the sales tax return looks like and you're going to have to fill out all the numbers from the quickbooks tax return into the actual real tax return so in this case we'll we'll do uh, gross sales which is 5170 that will translate into gross sales um, in this um, column one in uh, you know sales services or actually um, in this number one box then exempt sales would be we go back here all the sales are non-taxable which is the 5,000 then the taxable sales would be the 170 so we're back here we have taxable sales 170 and then tax due is going to be this 10.20 uh, now the way it works in Florida and this could be different in every state uh, there's actually a backside where you add the extra 1% of, of tax. So it's, it just, it's kind of funky in every state on how these things are, um, are calculated. But essentially, the combined state 6% plus the county 1%, the combination, the 1190 is uh, the part that you pay tax. Now, in Florida, if you pay early, you actually take, um, you get a credit, okay? You get a credit for, uh, basically, that's how the state pays you for helping them collect. So then what you would do is you click on add adjustment and let's say you're getting, I don't know, $5 credit. So we're going to put credit and discount and we'll put here uh, the account. So there would be a, an account called sales tax credits or something like that. You actually have to create an account like that, which I actually don't happen to have in my QuickBooks file. So I'm just going to pick this one right here. But there should be an income account called sales tax credits. I usually do other income called sales tax credits. And then on their amount, that's the discount that we're getting or the credit and click on add. So essentially what you will be paying the state, it's uh, $6.90. And in your sales tax return, this thing should add up all the way down to amount due with return $6.90. So that's kind of like uh, the mechanics of how this works. So you got the taxable stuff, the non-taxable stuff, and then the total uh, sales tax in the bottom. And then when I click on view uh, liability report, you actually get this in a report form. Okay, and this is uh, for a single uh, state in this particular case. I'm going to go back here for a second and go look at that return one more time. Let's go down here to last month. Let's view the return again. And right here where it says record payment, when you actually pay pay the state, which will probably be electronically or via a check, depending on how you do it, 
you're going to click on record payment and you're going to enter the same exact payment that you made them. QuickBooks will not pay your state directly. This functionality is not built into QuickBooks yet. You still have to do a separate tax return and file it. And you still have to make the payment separately, electronically or via check and pay the state directly. And then after you, you pay them, you go back into QuickBooks and go, yep, I use this bank account to pay them. It was with a check or whatever and click on record payment. And then you put it into the books that you pay them. So if you actually go back and look at the balance sheet, so let's go run a report and let's go look at a balance sheet. And then I'm going to look at balance sheet for last month, which is going to be for December and click on run report. I should have a liability here for Florida Department of Revenue uh, payable sales tax for $11.90. But if I put this, um, this balance sheet for today's date and click on run report, that liability should disappear. It's now zero because I've already recorded the payment. Now let's do um, some examples of sort of multiple state situations. So let's go back into taxes and sales tax and let's create a new jurisdiction. So let's go into uh, sales tax settings and then we're gonna click on add agency and then we're gonna add California here. So let's add California. I'm gonna add the whole state and let's say I pay them quarterly and then uh, start date, let's say it's going to be uh, January 29th, that's fine. And the method will be a cash. So I'm gonna show you kind of the difference. And by the way, I don't know if Florida's cash basis, so I have to kind of explain that piece as well. So we'll click on save, and then now we have California set up. And then we, the only way QuickBooks will know if the sales tax that goes to that customer is in California is based on their, on their address. So I'm gonna to go to new invoice. I'm going to pick again, the same customer as before, customer A. And then I'm going to pick a, the, the same wires account, the, the wires item. Let's put 50 of them for $14 a pop. They're taxable. It's 49 bucks. If I click on edit tax, this is calculating Florida tax. It's not calculating California tax. And the reason for that is because it doesn't know that this customer is in California. If I click on um, location ad address and click on edit, this is the, where I'm shipping from but then we have shipping too. So in here I can put uh, 101 Main Street, um, Los Angeles, California, 90210, okay? And I click on save, and then it says, okay, this is Florida um, Tax and Fee Administration. Do you collect sales tax for here? So I'm gonna hit yes, I do collect sales tax for there. Click on save and close. And now this is going to uh, calculate an entirely different tax, entirely different structure, right? This is 9.5%, not 7%. And it has three different jurisdictions that it's hitting. QuickBooks will do all this. And then we're going to come back down here, click on close. And then notice my sales tax is now $66.50. It's no longer $49 because it's an entirely different uh, calculation. And if I um, click on edit tax, we, we can go back and see what that is. And something you can do is click on override this amount and then put the specific amount that you want to charge for sales tax. Don't recommend you ever do this, okay? Because you're gonna, you're gonna throw the whole system, um, you're gonna make a huge mess <laughs> on your sales tax. But if for whatever reason, for some advanced reason that you don't understand and are very conscious about, you can actually override and say, you know what? This one's actually supposed to be 10%. Uh, so I'm gonna override this. And for whatever reason, I'll just put here, you know, whatever the override reason is, click on apply override, click on close, and now it's gonna charge actually 10%. If I click on edit tax one more time, I can click on reset recommend the value. So I made a mistake, I shouldn't have overrided. it. Click on that, click on close, and then QuickBooks puts it back to where it's supposed to go. That's how QuickBooks knows about this. So let's, let's click on save and close. Let's get out of this one. Let's do a new in invoice, let's go new invoice. And now I'm going to pick a different customer. Let's pick this customer here. And then let's say this one, I'm going to put the address here. So 5000 um, Garcia Avenue. I don't even know that's a real uh, street. Uh, Los, uh, let's do uh, Mountain View, California. Let's say I don't even know. I don't even know the, <laughs> the zip code on that. So let me select the item. 
let's see how good QuickBooks is at, at catching potentially uh, something like this. Okay, so let's see. So now this is using 16.43. Let me click on Edit Tax. Yeah, so this one, it, it, figure, it figured it out. It figured this one out. Even when I click on Edit, see, it, it actually did figure out that this was in California and it's Santa Clara County, which is really interesting. And then we'll click on Close, and then we have its own separate entire calculation for sales tax. So let, let's get out of that, and let's X out, and let's go look at uh, the reports. So let's go back into uh, sales tax, and let's go down and see what our California return is looking like. Let's go to more details. So right now, California says zero. And the reason for that is because I said California is cash basis. Let's see what happens. Let's go to new. Let's go to receive payment. And let's receive payment for, I guess it was this one. That was, yeah, that one, there we go. Let's receive that payment. Click on save and close. So now we have um, only based on cash basis. Let's go back to the sales tax center. And now, yep, there it is. $16.43 is being accumulated in, in cash basis um, only. And if I receive the payment on the other invoice, uh, let's go up here to customer A. Let's just receive both of those payments. In theory, the other $66.50 for sales tax should be added here. And there we go. So we click on the drop down menu. And here we go, taxable sales, gross sales, sales tax owed. And that sales tax return that's here, that's only for, for, um, for Florida. Change this to California. There we go. So here's my California down here in the bottom. Here's my California sales tax return. Let's go to view return. And then we, we should get the same uh, type of information in here. Okay, so we have our, our gross sales. Everything is taxable in this case. Every single invoice that we created is taxable. Then the sales tax amount, and this is the exact amount that we would owe to the, to the state when we finish. So there's a lot more stuff that has to do with sales tax. You know, there's a lot of more nuance. Uh, like some states charge a particular uh, sales tax for sales up to a certain dollar amount. And then after a certain dollar amount, they don't charge, you know, surcharges. So that gets a little tricky. Um, you also have the, the combined sales tax situations or the, or the custom sales tax situations that we, that we discussed briefly at the beginning. And then we also have the, the issues of economic nexus. Economic nexus is deciding which states you have nexus with. And essentially, there's, um, here's a, basically a summary of all the states, and you are going to go in there and choose which states you have nexus with. But technically, um, the, the nexus is based on how much sales for a whole year or you have, or sometimes it's for a whole month, uh, in that specific state, and that specific state has other qualifications that will force you to have nexus, which means you have to report sales tax in that state. So that's more of a question you need to ask to a CPA that knows sales tax in that particular state. So hopefully that's helpful, and you kind of know how to navigate sales tax from here. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.